This great big story is made possible by Lexus. Experience amazing. Light is very powerful for me, yet it's also something that I'm desperate to hold on to. It's going, you know, the lights are going out. So I'm struggling to hold on to the light. I was in art school in 79 and the eye doctor said, Mr. Aram, you have an eye disease, you will be blind in 20 years. And I said, what? You're telling me this bad news, I'm gonna make the best art I can ever make. God damn it, you know, I'm gonna do it. I see very bright lights, and I can't see dim light at all. I've never seen a star in my whole life. For example, I was looking at that view uh, towards Manhattan. What I see is a very small area, maybe about half the size of my thumb. And all around that, it's not black, it's not white, it's not gray, it just doesn't exist. That's how I see everything else, it's just non-existence. There are a number of visually impaired visual artists now, and we do have a facet in the art world. Light painting is a process where you use your mind as much as your eyes. It's a very long time exposure made in a darkened room with a flashlight. The person will be there and I will turn off the lights and wherever I don't paint with the flashlight, it'll be black in the picture. The fear I have about blindness is very strong. It's a feeling that my life will not be worthwhile if I can't see. But as a totally blind person, I will still be able to do the light painting. So it is a comfort to know that my work is strong uh, even though maybe in the future I won't be able to see it. Darkness is the canvas and the light is my brush. With light painting you can create new worlds in the darkness. My name is Hannu Huhtamo and I paint with light. I live in Finland. We have amazing nature here. We have uh, long summer nights that are warm and full of light. But on the opposite, there is also this dark part. It's called polar night. It starts in December and it lasts for about 50 days. The sun doesn't rise above the horizon at all. And for a light painter that is quite good. I do long exposure photography, which is a photographic technique that allows me to draw with light. Uh, the exposure times can vary from a seconds to hours, and the idea is to use the light sources as the brushes or pencils and the dark surroundings are the canvas. When I start I might do some sketches on paper. After that I go to the location, I search for details that I want to emphasize with some light treatment. It will start to look like a completely a new place. Going to a dark woods or to an abandoned house, you first think that, oh, I don't want to go there because there's just so nasty looking dark places. But through light painting, I have examined these places and they look beautiful. You see the place differently. After I got hurt, 
it was painful to sit on the sidelines and watch other people play sports and participate and not be involved. When I started this interest in photography, it was an opportunity to get back into sports again. My name is Lauren Worthington, and I'm a photographer. When I was 21 years old, I wanted to be a baseball player. I was playing one evening, and I hit a great double that was a lousy triple. And I slid into third base, came in contact with the other player's knee, and it pinched my spinal cord. The result of that was paralysis. I'm a C5-6 quadriplegic. I've been in the wheelchair for the past 30 years. It wasn't until almost 20 years after my injury that I picked up a camera. Adapting the camera is kind of an extension of learning how to deal with a disability. I cannot use my right fingers. What I figured out is that I could use an external shutter control with my mouth and take the photograph. The type of photography that I do is about people who are involved in adaptive sports. And I felt my best photographs were of people with disabilities because they saw in me somebody that they could open up to. When I take photos of athletes, I want to show them as somebody who works hard, who competes hard, and who wants to win that really shows more about the athlete than the disability. When I first started shooting adaptive sports, I immediately set my goal to taking photographs at the Paralympics. I got the phone call from the United States Olympic Committee that they were interested in me going to Rio de Janeiro in 2016. There were some of the most amazing athletes there, and it worked out, same as what I've always had to deal with, is you just gotta try it. Probably the first day it's not gonna work so well, but after that, you just start getting better and better at everything you do. A hog, well, they're huge. I know it's like seeing a, a bus in the water. And she looks at you with those big eyes and she stares at you. It feels beautiful. That's when you know that she's letting you in. That's Anwar Pathane. He's a photographer. And in 2015, he won the grand prize in National Geographic's Traveler Photo Contest for his photo Whale Whisperer. So we're talking about what it feels like to come face to face with one of the largest mammals on our planet. The first time, he was in Roca Partida. We knew we were going to see the whales because we were hearing them. And when they're nearby, your whole body resonates it's so strong. Oh, I love the sound of the whales. It's, it's, it's as beautiful as seeing them. He's underwater and off in the distance. I saw the silhouette of the whale. Big, big silhouette that looks like a submarine without features. It's just like a big object. And as he got closer, things became clearer. Oh, there's the eye, there's the fin. Oh, that's a big whale. That's a very big whale. The most profound feeling he had was a connection to the whale herself. She looks at you, right into your eyes. Yeah. And you feel the connection. Oh, there's a mammal connection. You feel accepted. Anwar's been diving for 17 years, and his photographs are more than just pictures. Most of the photos I make, I, I try to share them because people that doesn't dive and doesn't know the ocean, they might start to pay attention to the ocean. And I like whales. It's a reminder that we share the world with very, very wise and beautiful animals down there. <laughs>